So all these chapters are miniatures. First verses we read today, miniature of the sadness of the world and all the unnecessary sickness and some of the necessary sickness that results from sin, not individual fault. Beginning of chapter 6, a desolate wilderness, hungry people. That's a picture of the world, starving spiritually. It's a miniature of the world. The 24 hours here is a miniature of 2,000 years. Let me explain. It's the time of the Passover, which prefigured the cross. It tells us it was the Passover. When Christ breaks the bread, symbolic of himself being broken on the cross. What did he do after he died on the cross? He went back up to heaven, went up on the mountain. What happens to the disciples? Well, they're on a stormy sea. A ship is a symbol of the church, often used in early centuries. A ship with 12 people in it, symbol of the church. So Christ goes up to heaven, symbolised by the mountain. His disciples are on the stormy sea. Not easy to be a Christian, but it's a lot easier than not being a Christian. That's what appeals to me. I like the easy way. The easy way is the Christian way because the way of transgressors is hard. Whatever we sow, we reap. Whatever you sow in thought, word, deed, you reap. But you reap more than you sow. No farmer sows a bag of wheat to get a bag of wheat. And ignorance of the seed makes no difference. I think I'm sowing wheat, but I'm really sowing weeds. Well, I'll get weeds, not wheat. Ignorance of seed makes no difference. And the delay shouldn't make us comfortable because the harvest will come. The law of the harvest. Whatever we sow, we reap. Right. Jesus, gone up to heaven, symbolised by the ascent of the mountain, disciples on the stormy sea because life's not easy as a Christian, though it's much harder if you're not. You know, the Bible has about 365 fear knots or the equivalent. I like that. That's one for every day. I need that. Be a Christian is to find the secret of deliverance from fear, from sadness, from hopelessness, from despair. Yes, it's tough, but it's not as tough as if you're not a Christian. Okay, disciples on the stormy sea, and near the end of their night, in the fourth watch, <coughs> that's between three and six, there's a huge storm and they're about to go down. Pictures the last great tribulation of the church. Set forth in Daniel 12, 1 to 2, Revelation 13, Revelation 19, Revelation 16, etc., etc. Christ foretold it in Matthew 24, beginning at verse 15, down to about 28. The last great tribulation for the church when Christians will be blamed for everything that's going wrong and it'll look as though Christians are going to be finished with when Christ will come down from the mountain. When Christ will return in the fourth watch of the night, when everything is bad, Christ will come, deliver his people, and then we'll be at the shore, heaven. So you have 2,000 years of history. When you look at this miniature and give it its enlargement, he breaks the bread, the cross. He goes up to the mountain, going up to heaven. Disciples go on to the stormy sea, the ship of the church through the ages. Terrible tempest threatens to sink them at the end, the last great tribulation. Christ comes down from the mountain, second advent. When he gets into the boat, reaches the shore, heaven. 2,000 years. Quite useless to us unless we take it personally. We're all on a voyage and it's always stormy. Forgive me if I repeat myself again, all teachers should do it because we forget so easily. But there's nobody that doesn't have troubles. And there's nobody that doesn't think that their troubles aren't worse than everybody else's. And everybody's wrong. Trouble's part of life. Like clothing, fresh air, sunshine, food. Trouble, it's part of life. And the answer is Christ. And doing what he says. Obeying his laws, physical don't lead a sedentary life. If the blood pools, you'll get depressed. 
Pascal, one of the greatest philosophers that ever lived, great brain, wonderful man, Pascal said, life is motion. He said, being still is next to being dead. There are times to be still, but if you're still all the time, you'll soon be finished. So life is tough, but if we follow Christ and we obey him, his physical laws, his mental laws, think positively, think hopefully, think faithfully, think prayerfully, think gratefully, the devil can never overcome anyone who's cultivated the habit of gratitude. Now I repeat, that's worth a million dollars. Put it in the box as you go. That's worth a million dollars. The devil can never overcome anyone who's cultivated the habit of gratitude. And our blessings are like the drops of rain. More than we can count. You know, there's an old hymn. When I became a Christian, I loved the hymns. Wonderful old hymns. And you all know the one, count your blessings. Count them one by one. And it'll surprise you what the Lord has done. Listen, however bad your world is, however heavy your pack of troubles, if you can see, thank God you can see. If you can walk, thank God you can walk. If you can digest, thank God for that. There are lots of billionaires that can't digest. Constipated billionaires taking medication all the time. If you can talk, that's a great asset, especially if you're married. <laughs> yeah. So there are all sorts of things to be grateful for and the devil can never overcome anyone who's cultivated the practice of gratitude. So, yes, we're on a stormy sea. Yes, everybody's got it tough. Yes, life is hard. Yes, it is a school, not a playground. But if we keep the laws, physical laws, eat right, move right, mental laws, love, faith, hope, prayerfulness, gratitude, spiritual laws, trust in Jesus, we can negotiate. And life's not forever. I'm glad I'm not going to live to Methuselah's age. Suffer enough at 81. But to live at Methuselah's age? The Greeks had a, a myth about a man that asked the gods he might live forever. And they gave it to him, but when his friends began to die one by one, and he was terribly lonely, and he seemed to see more and more troubles, he asked the gods to take the gift back. Good thing that life is brief. And it is very brief. When you're in trouble, you think your troubles are permanent. They're not permanent. Nothing's permanent here except the love of God. Right, we're going to look at one more passage and then we're going home. <laughs> Please look at John 7. There's a wonderful searching passage here. It begins saying that the brothers tell Jesus, why don't you come up with us to the feast and show yourself and work a few miracles? And Jesus said, I'm not going yet. But he went later and I want you to look at what he said, verse 37 onward. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the spirit, whom those who believed on him were later to re receive. You know, there's a very searching <coughs> verse in Romans 8, verse 9. If anyone has not the spirit of Christ, they don't belong to Christ. Now what's that mean? It means this, that when we're born again, the second member of the Godhead comes to live inside us. That's the beginning of what we call sanctification, whereby we're getting better, but a very tedious process and takes all life. But the Holy Spirit comes, and when he comes, he sows the seed of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, temperance, you know, fruit of the Spirit. And if anyone doesn't have that fruit, the Spirit's not in them. They don't belong to Christ. Now, I'm not talking about fruit grown up in its maturity. No one has it in its complete maturity. But it ought to be there. It should have begun. And it should be manifest to the people that know us. 
if everybody we know thinks we're a rogue, they're probably right. So here's the passage from, from Jesus. He says, look, if anyone's thirsty, well, you'd say, surely everybody gets thirsty. Jesus is inferring that most people aren't serious about spiritual blessings. This is true. This is true. I talk to people when I'm out walking or when I'm in swimming or something and they're interested in politics and uh, they're interested in material things but they're not interested in spiritual things. Most people aren't. <coughs> Jesus says if anyone, if you can crawl inside that if, you're most blessed. Come unto me. You're not saved by the church. New Testament knows nothing about denominations. Nothing at all. God's people are in every church. There's only one church that heaven knows. That's the church of the twice born. So he says, come unto me and drink. Church is good. You should go to church. Studying the Bible is good. Prayer is good. Giving is good. Christian service is good. But most of all, we need to be drinking from Christ. Learning what he's like. Learning that he loves us. If we really believed God loved us and meant to do us good, we'd cease to worry about the future. We'd trust God as a child trusts a loving parent. Our ills and torments would disappear, swallowed up in the will of God. Are you with me? Do you understand me? If we really believe that God loves us, we would cease to worry about the future. If we would trust God as a child trusts a loving parent, all our ills and torments would disappear. Our will will be swallowed up in the will of God. When we're full of fear, it's because we're full of lack of surrender, lack of faith. The cure, looking unto Jesus. Come unto me and drink. And then from within that person will flow rivers of living water. The influence of a true Christian. Instead of being self-centred, worrying about self all the time, our activities and influence go out to bless others. Endless. That's the Christian life. Christian life is not being preoccupied with the self. That's a heathen life. And it has no good fruit. A Christian life flows out to bless others. This spake he of the Spirit, which those that believe, that's not hard, anyone can believe, trust, should receive. Let's pray. Thank you for this wonderful promise. May we drink from Jesus every day. May we receive from him every day the fullness of the Spirit that from us may go streams of blessing. May we not be so self-centred, always be worrying about ourselves. Help us to understand that as heathenish. Help us to be true Christians, looking unto Jesus and reflecting him. Amen.